Hello everybody, welcome back to Sophisticates Cakes by Mary. For this week's cake, I was inspired by an order we had at work last week where I had to make isomalt sugar cake topper. And I thought if I can do that with numbers, why, why not make it with geometric shapes? So I came up with this idea and I think it turned out beautiful. So let's start with our filling and our crumb coating of our cake. This is a four layer, six inch round cake. And I'm just using chocolate and a yellow cake and I'm filling it with um, my American buttercream. And I will link the recipe and the tutorial on how to make that buttercream. And I set it in the fridge to set up for about 10 minutes. I'm sorry, in the freezer for about 10 minutes and then brought it out and now I'm just crumb coating with a dark chocolate ganache. And all that is, is two parts dark chocolate to one part heavy cream melt them together slowly and mix them so that it is smooth in consistency and then let it come to room temperature and thicken up till it's about the consistency of peanut butter. And then you can pipe it or spread it on. And I used a large scraper to get that even and then put it in the freezer while I am making the toppers. So what I'm doing is I'm just using metal geometric hexagon shaped cookie cutters. You could do this with any shape, honestly, as long as your cutters are metal. And now I just sprayed some nonstick spray on the inside of the cutters and I'm just removing the excess. I didn't want it to affect the, um, the uh, I'm calling it isomalt, but it really is just sugar. This recipe that I used was from scratch and all it is is granulated sugar, water, and glucose. And I will attach the recipe for that as well. Now you just mix them all together. I try to not use my spatula any more than I have to. At the beginning I do just to get all the ingredients wet. And then I just go ahead and let it simmer. Let it boil on about a medium high heat until you get to 300 degrees. And once you get to 300 degrees, remove it from your heat. And I set it on the counter for just maybe 30 seconds so that the bubbles kind of um, dissipate. If you set it on a cool surface in particular, that's really going to dissipate those bubbles a little faster. But it will also let, make it um, firm up a little faster. So you just kind of watch that. And then I made some clear ones and then I made some pink ones, two shades of pink. I'm using just um, soft pink food coloring for both of them. I just added more to the darker ones. And I have these on a sheet pan with a silicone mat underneath. That way you don't have to worry about your sugar kind of spilling out from underneath of it. And even if you have cutters that aren't completely level with your surface, just go ahead and push them down, being very careful because isomalt is or sugar it is very, very, very hot. So watch what you're doing. Maybe use a, an oven mitt to push down on those cutters because what that, that's gonna do is kind of score the sugar so that you can pop off any extra pieces like I just did there. Now I just, I'm removing them from the silicone mat and just kind of getting them ready to clarify the surface. I wanted to put that one back in the cutter because I use my creme brulee torch to um, clarify the surface. I guess is the only way I can put it. The heat removes the, um, the hazy look somewhat and gets rid of bubbles, any air bubbles that you might have in there. And I didn't want it, I put it back in the cutter because I didn't want it to get warm and then get misshapen. So I know I am touching these, but be very careful. Because like I said, it's very, very hot. I'm just used to this, I've been doing it for a long time. And then you can just kind of basically coax, almost just pop those shapes right out of your cookie cutters. It's amazing how easy this actually is. I may be utilizing this technique quite a bit in the future, just be forewarned. <laughs> And then make sure that you torch both sides of your, your sugar. 
and since these were out of the molds I just kind of moved around a lot don't want to you don't want to stay in one spot for too long because once your sugar starts to melt it kind of is a slow process it's slow melting and before you know it it's kind of melted too much and you've lost your shape and then I am putting these on some parchment paper because I am putting a glaze on top a confectioner's glaze that seals the surface so that you don't have to worry so much about them getting hazy as they sit at room temperature adds a little shine and keeps them from getting hazy now I'm gonna marble my fondant I am just using a satin ice on this one and I'm using different shades of pink and some of that soft brown because I wanted it to have kind of an ivory look with a little pop of pink. I didn't want real obvious marbling. I wanted it very soft and very subtle. So you make your, you put your white into a log shape, add small snakes of the other colors to that, squeeze it together, kind of twist it and pull it and roll it. This will never turn out the same way twice. I did streak some pink, just pink food coloring on there to get some, a little bit of the um, brighter, deeper pink in there, just a little bit. And I used some cornstarch on my surface and I'm rolling this out into a long rectangular shape. I'm using the paneling method on this cake. I don't always do the paneling method, but I just, if I want a nice sharp corner on the edge, I like to do the paneling. Somebody just asked me recently, um, if my fondant dries out and gets cracky when I do this. And honestly, it does not. A lot of the times, if you're having that issue, I will suggest doing a marshmallow fondant. And I will attach a link to that recipe here too. I'm just so used to doing this that I just kind of know the play time that I have. And since you're not wrapping it around the top edge of the cake, you don't have to worry so much about ripping and tearing and elephant skinning. Now I just used corn, some, I'm sorry, some shortening that you can see there I brushed on the surface. Just a very thin layer of it so that your fondant sticks. This will not affect the taste on your fondant. It absorbs into the fondant and since fondant has shortening in it already, it's such a little amount that you're not gonna notice it. All it is doing, its sole purpose is getting the fondant to attach to the, um, the ganache. Now I just picked that up and lifted it on. I, like I said, I know how to do this. I've done it so many times. And if you let it set on your counter for about 10 minutes, um, it won't pull out of shape, but you have to move kind of quick. If you have an issue with that, um, I would suggest either rolling it around, wrapping it around a, a um, rolling pin or a skewer, or I'm sorry, a support, or putting it on a piece of acetate and lifting it up that way. I um, have done all of these and I will try to remember to attach links to videos where I have done those different techniques. So you can check those out and see what's gonna work for you best. Now I went ahead and I just put it back in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes just to firm up because it's so much easier to cut that excess off when it has set up. And then just cut off that excess and smooth it out with your smoother. And I just went ahead and put, I wanted one singular large flower on top and that's just silk flower. You can make sugar flowers, you can do wafer paper flowers, whatever you prefer um, for time constraints and for time reasons since I do this on just my day off. Um, I just went ahead and used, I found that very pretty, I guess it's, a, it's kind of a peony flower, artificial flower. I got that at Michael's craft store, I believe. Then I'm just edging it out with some gold luster dust mixed with some Everclear. You could use vodka. You could use um, rejuvenating spirits. Spirits I have not found those in the states. I don't know if I just am looking in the wrong spot. Or you can even use a lemon extract. And I'm just kind of lining the outside edge and just brushing it in towards the middle just a little bit. And then I use that same gold to kind of find some veins within the marbled fondant and just kind of accenting those just a little bit. I find that that kind of 
um, brings out the marble a little bit but also just ties in the touch of gold that I put on the outside edge of those hexagon sugar pieces. And I just used a fine tipped paintbrush. And continue it on to the top also. And you can wrap it around the back, do that on the back if that is the look that you're going for. Now to get these pieces of sugar to stick in the top, for the larger one I did mark out and I cut a little bit of the fondant out to stick it in and then I put some a little thin line of buttercream behind it to anchor it. These ones on the sides I just used some piping gel. Since piping gel is clear you're not going to see it through your sugar. And then I just went ahead and brushed the outside edge of these pieces with some gold. Also you don't have to do that. I just decided I want to do this time. And actually if you don't, I find, I no, kind of notice that you do see a little bit more light coming through if you want them to look a little bit more like stained glass. Now this is a scratch recipe but I do find that it is very see-through and it works out very well. So there you go guys, this is my marble fondant geometric hexagon shaped sugar decorations. Now remember you can do that with any shape that you want. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video and if you'd like to watch some other videos go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here and if you would like to check out my other social media I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name Sophisticates by Mary and please take the time to share like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you on the next tutorial.